Let's talk about the nervous system. And specifically, most of these lectures are going to be about nerve cell physiology or neurophysiology. I should start with a review of facilitated diffusion and active transport. Let's see if I can do that here on this slide. So um, remember when we were studying diffusion and osmosis, and I realized that a lot of your attention probably went to the topic of osmosis. And it's, it's tricky and so it, osmosis is not a part of this story, but facilitated diffusion and active transport, they are. Remember, we have got passive mechanisms like diffusion, facilitated diffusion, and osmosis, and then we had active mechanisms. And you probably have been busy thinking about phagocytosis and stuff, but we're gonna be talking about active transport and facilitated diffusion. So here we're gonna have the phospholipid bilayer. Great, phospholipid bilayer. Now, the phospholipid bilayer will allow some things to go straight on through, like oxygen, but there are other things that are not allowed to go through, like sodium and potassium. And sodium and potassium are the central parts of this particular story that we're talking about. Right? So if the body wants sodium or potassium to go through the cell membrane, it needs to have a facilitated diffusion channel. So this little facilitated diffusion channel is going to specifically only allow sodium or there will be another one, green, there will be another one that maybe only allows potassium to go through. Now, in the nervous system, these particular proteins that are called facilitated diffusion channels, and we'll talk about them in more detail, um, uh, these, these particular proteins, they are designed to only allow these particular things to move through them by the passive mechanism of diffusion. That means that if there's more potassium here, let's imagine there is, then potassium would be allowed to leave, right? On the other hand, on the other hand, if there was less potassium, if there was less potassium in here, then potassium would be allowed to enter. Facilitated diffusion channels are just doors that allow diffusion of substances that otherwise cannot cross the phospholipid bilayer, okay? So remember facilitated diffusion channels, and we'll talk about them in a little more detail. Now, let's also talk about um, active transport, okay? Let's see what color. All right, we'll use red. Let's talk about active transport. Active transport is the only way to move substances, and by the way, for this story, the substances that are being moved are sodium and potassium, the only way to move substances against their concentration gradient. Okay, the only way to move it against the concentration gradient. And so that means that active transport molecules, they use ATP, because DER, active transport, needs energy. And if there's more uh, pota potassium here, an active transport protein can force more potassium to come in. That's against the concentration gradient. Okay. Something else I was going, oh, I was going to ask you just to remember, we were just talking about the endocrine system. Which of these is important for the movement of glucose? Which one of these? Right? Facilitated diffusion. Because glucose is another substance. Glucose is not allowed to come into the cell. But when you've just eaten and there's more glucose out here, 
the cell inside is like, oh, I wish we had some glucose inside of here, right? But, um, sorry, I'll put these guys back. But if even though there's more glucose outside, the glucose cannot cross the phospholipid bilayer. So in order for glucose to enter your cell, it needs these facilitated diffusion channels and facilitated diffusion channels for glucose are called glutes. All right, let's move ahead. As we're talking about the nervous system, the primary function of the nervous system is communication. Remember the human body has got two communication channels. One was the endocrine system, this one is the, is the nervous system. And there are three general functions of the nervous system. So here's going to be, oh, here's gonna be me, right? So sensory perception, that is information going to my brain. So sensory is generally all the information that is being carried to my brain. Integration, integration is what my brain is busy doing. And then commands going out, that is motor. The nerve cells, the nerve, yeah, the nerve cells that carry information in, they do are not the same ones that carry information out. When you were in 150, you would have learned that there are different tracks through the spinal cord. Some of them are carrying information up to the brain. Those are the sensory neurons that are going to the brain. And some of them are conveying commands out. And those are the motor neurons that are conveying commands out. Remember, the sensory goes in through the dorsal root, the motor goes out through the ventral root, right? So the nervous system has got an organization. Sensory is information going in, integration is what our central nervous system does, and motor is what is coming out. Now, let me be a little more clear, a little more clear about this stuff, that when it comes to sensory, Sensory does not have to be conscious. It's not necessary for it to be conscious. When we get to the cardiovascular system, we will learn that there are sensory neurons that are conveying what your blood pressure is to your brainstem. That is sensory because it's going to the central nervous system. But if I asked you, what is your blood pressure? You don't know. Your brainstem knows, but it's not a conscious sensation it is still considered sensory because it's going towards the central nervous system. Motor also does not need to be conscious. When we think of motor, we think of moving my hand, but it does not have to be conscious. So when your central nervous system is... My cat brought a bug into the house, okay. Okay. When, when uh, motor does not have to be conscious. When the, um, when your uh, brainstem controls how fast you are breathing, you're not changing the rate of respiration consciously all the time. If you're huffing and puffing while you're running, you actually can't stop yourself from huffing and puffing, right? And integration. Again, when we think of integration, we think of thinking. Thinking certainly is the province of the brain. However, the central nervous system includes the spinal cord. And the spinal cord also can do integration and make decisions. So if here, wait, here's my brain, here's my spinal cord, it is possible for the sensation of how I'm burning my hand to come into my spinal cord and my spinal cord can send out a motor command, pull your hand away, right? All of that here for the central, for the nervous system. We're going to start here at the beginning of our next video.